100 days ago, I thought it would be a great experiment to try and grow every cool season grass type from a single seed. That way we could all see what each of the individual grass types looked like isolated into one single plant. I grew each of these plants through the winter, keeping them inside and outside based on the weather. And now that spring's here, let's take a look at what things look like throughout the first three months after sowing. All right, guys, today I'm coming to you with a spread of cold season grasses, or at least grasses that can be grown in cold season territory. I got seven of them and a cat. That one's backwards, but I want to show you what these grass types, all of these grass types can look like one individual grass plant per pot. We're not talking like a dense seeding, we're talking one individual seed in a pot side by side with all of the grass types. So you kind of understand a little bit more about what these grass types look like, how they, uh, I don't know, how they compare. Now I'm not going to grow these seeds and show them to you after what, like 14 days? So that doesn't really make that big of a difference. I gotta move the cat here. He's gonna knock everything down. I'm literally gonna grow these things for at least three months and, I don't know, show you pictures side by side along the way and then somewhere around day 90 to day 100 then we'll come and we'll look at what these grass plants look like look at this this cat man somewhere around day 100 i wouldn't call any of these grass types mature because that's not a full season that's like a quarter of a growing season but it's an awful big difference than a early germinated sprout now, like I said, all of these grass types can be grown up north. They're all cold season grasses, except for buffalo grass. Buffalo grass is a warm season grass type. However, it can be grown in the north. Its growing season is extremely short, however. I have experience attempting to grow this in northern climates. Currently, what you see behind me is December weather in Southern California. I don't currently live in cold season territory, so it's really easy for me to grow cool season grasses right now. I don't want to throw them in my lawn though, so I'm going to be using this uh, gardening pot. The seed starting kit comes with seven pots, but I don't really care about these. I don't want to use them. It doesn't, however, come with soil. So for the soil, I'm using native soil from my main lawn. I've actually taken it inside and sterilized uh, the soil. The reason I did that is because I don't want warm season grasses coming out of this soil just because I'm trying to run an experiment. But I also don't want to run off to the store and buy potting soil because potting soil does not simulate a lawn very well. So let's fill this up, tamp everything down, and we'll put one single seed in every cell and then we'll come back over the course of the next three and a half months. All right, here we are 10 full days after the initial sowing. Annual rye is like nuts tall. Uh, this is the first one that sprouted, and I want to say it sprouted somewhere around day three and a half. Crazy. Uh, buffalo grass actually sprouted pretty early, somewhere around day four and a half to five. And you can see how it kind of comes up in a bunch. I'm curious if I might have had two seeds uh, kind of connected to each other when I put it in, because it kind of looks like two bunches. Uh, that's basically how buffalo grass comes up. Uh, it doesn't really come up as a single blade. Um, and I can show you that. Here, give me a second. Here, this I did this pot also at the same time I was doing these. Uh, each one of these is buffalo grass, and you can see each one is coming up as uh, two, except for that one. That one might be an unwanted weed. I use native soil, so there might be some things in here that I don't actually want. But all of the buffalo grasses are coming up in pairs from a single seed. Anyway, over here we've got Kentucky 31 came up pretty early. Turf type tall fescue um, was a little bit slower. Uh, the last one to pop was the creeping red. It's just barely there. So far, everything has sprouted. Here's perennial rye. Uh, everything has sprouted except for the Kentucky bluegrass. Right there in the middle, it's, it's just not up yet. Oh, wait a second. No, nope, there it is. It just popped just this morning. So it took 10 days for the Kentucky bluegrass. All right, it takes a little bit of time, but I took all of the soil and I tamped it down really good. So to simulate the lawn, everything is usually a little bit compacted, far more compacted than potting soil is when you throw it into grow cells, growing cells. There's a little bit of clay in here. You never find clay in potting soil bags. 
certainly not seed starting bags at the, at the local garden center. What I'm going to be putting in here for you today is not actually all of the cold season grasses. This right here is creeping red fescue. I think of the fine fescue category as a series of four different fine fescues. You got creeping red, you got sheeps, you got chewing, and you got hard. Uh, instead of doing all four fine fescues, I have compared all four of them before on a video here on this channel. They're all very similar, so you're probably not going to see much of a difference in looking at a one single grass blade. So I'm only going to be doing creeping red because I actually push creeping red fescue a lot here on the Turp Mechanic channel. I want to show you what it looks like and just say this is creeping red. So I'm going to do creeping red, which is a fine fescue. I'm going to do a uh, Kentucky bluegrass perennial rye seed, a Kentucky 31 tall fescue seed. This is a turf type tall fescue. Now for comparison's sake to the perennial rye, I'm going to throw in an annual rye seed. And then lastly is the buffalo grass. The buffalo grass seed looks very, very different than the other uh, cool season grass types. I'm going to sink a single seed right in the middle of each one of these cells. And then I don't have it right here, but I'm going to cover everything up with a dusting of peat moss because that's generally what you do when you put seed down in the lawn. And that retains the moisture and uh, everything's going to grow through it. It also is going to help it. Uh, it's gonna also going to help me to water it well without having to move the seed around. All right, I'm going to go ahead and label all of these cells with, I don't know, standard like gardening labeling techniques. I'm also going to put some water on this. But like I said, the soil itself is uh, sterile. So the only thing growing out of this is going to be the seeds that I just put into it. I should also say that um, this, all of this seed is going to germinate most likely inside my house where it's about 70 degrees and I'll bring them outside. They will never, over the next three months, see any temperature below 45 degrees. I won't allow that to happen. And they're most likely never going to see an air temperature above 80 degrees for at least the next couple months. I can't guarantee that, but it's most likely. Uh, but it's most likely going to be like that. Um, basically, this is a perfect simulation for standard spring weather in many parts of the northern part of our country or anywhere else that grows cold season grasses. Come on, girl, let's go water it. I'll bring that. You wanna bring that? Yeah. It's all dirty. All right, let's take it inside. All right, here we are approximately 30 days from when I sowed the seed. I need to trim a lot of these. You see how tall they are. And you'll rye. Got a few things. There's something unwanted coming up here. The creeping red fescue, which is the fine fescue, is really starting to get tall finally. Uh, buffalo grass looks a little bushy. But everything pretty much has three leaves. Notice that? Except for the KBG. We always talk about KBG, Kentucky bluegrass, being the slow, the laggard, and there's only two leaves there. Oh, I guess creeping red is also only two leaves. 30 days in, one month after sowing. All right, here we are. I think it's somewhere around 41 days. Um, these little grass things haven't been trimmed in a few, and obviously they haven't been watered in a few, so they're about due. But look at this, perennial rye, we got four. Four leaves, annual rye has four. Look how tall that grows, look at that. Everything was trimmed at the same time, K31 back there is rivaling annual rye in height, but it's only got three leaves. So annual rye, because it's an annual, is putting less energy into the root structure. So it's growing taller and faster, bunching out faster, eventually will make seed. KBG, we're finally up to three leaves. KBG is here in the middle. Right in there, right there. And buffalo looks nice and bushy. Creeping red also has three teeny leaves. That's where we stand at 40 days past seeding. So it's roughly 30 days since these, since these things have been growing. Oh, I didn't say anything about turf type tall fescue. Look at this, turf type has four leaves coming up compared to K31's three leaves. Turf type is also not growing as tall as fast. Look at that, big difference. Because turf type is essentially 
an improved variety of K31. Both of them are tall fescues, both of them are turf friendly varieties. But turf type tall fescue is just better for a lawn. It's got a little bit darker of a color, doesn't grow quite as high, doesn't quite bunch um, as bunchiness. It's a little bit more uniform. So you can see we've got four leaves coming out and it's not as tall as K31 is. Along the same lines, perennial rye has bunched into four leaves compared to annual rye's four leaves. But annual rye is just reaching for the sky. And again, I would say perennial rye is putting more of its energy into root development because it's supposed to live year over year over year compared to annual rye who needs to grow up fast and put out seed. All right, I'm going to give these guys a trim, give them some water, and soon I'm going to put them outside for the next 60 days. All right, today is day 71 since I planted all of these seeds. Let's take a look. I kind of skipped over a few 10-day increments. Let me put this on the hot tub here. All right, this is kind of cool, kind of interesting to see. Uh, annual rye, notice that, I mean, I cut all of these about at the same time. The annual rye is growing up taller and faster, although it is pretty, uh, it's being paced pretty well by the perennial rye and the, and the K31 over there. Um, all of this needs a trim. I wanted to wait to do it till after I film this. You'll notice down at the bottom, all of the older leaves have browned out and kind of died off. Uh, and the newer leaves are going up. Uh, this is, I mean, this is kind of to be expected. This is an annual plant. This plant is not supposed to live more than one season. So it's really putting on tons of leaf growth. It sheds the older leaves, just going up high, looking for the sun. If I were to dig this up, the root mass, um, once it's like fully mature, isn't going to be as substantial as the other plants because it's not supposed to overwinter. Uh, perennial rye, you can see that there are multiple leaf blades, but at the bottom you still see uh, the die off of the original blades, and that is very normal in most all plants. That's it's not exactly a thatch layer, but this is dead debris that goes onto the soil. So if you've got tons of plants, tons of uh, perennial rye in your lawn, it is common to have dead leaves on the soil. Let's come over here to the creeping red fescue. These blades, you notice that they are much thinner. See that? It is a fine fescue. And here, even the ones at the super duper bottom are still green. I actually don't think they've quite died off yet. And I'm curious if any of those are going to be uh, going to be staying like that or um, I don't know. I'm curious what's going to happen to those lower ones. Usually by the time that they're down on the ground like that, they brown out. But those haven't browned. Take a look at the buffalo. About 21 days ago or so, I thinned the buffalo out. The whole thing was, the whole point of this whole thing was to have one single grass plant per pot. And I felt like the buffalo accidentally had multiple seeds kind of conjoined together when I planted it. So I did thin it out. That might have stunted it a little bit. However, it still does look healthy. You'll notice for a warm season grass, the blades are quite thin. Uh, they are not thick blades like. Um, Things like look at the turf type tall fescue here, or even the Kentucky 31 fescue has a wider blade. So uh, it's not growing as tall as fast, and that's also to be expected because buffalo grass doesn't ever really get all that tall, even if you never cut it. Um, at day 71, you're noticing, you can even see right here, without even getting super duper close, you see a whole bunch of these like parallel veins running up the turf type tall fescue. It's really easy to identify tall fescue by those parallel veins running up. Here in the Kentucky 31 tall fescue, you're seeing the same thing. Now we're still not quite seeing a color difference in my opinion, but you are noticing down here, um, only um, the leader leaves are growing and these lower ones, it's not like I've cut them, uh, anytime recently, they're just down there. So this is really starting to bunch. You notice that nothing is like hanging out on the soil like it is with the perennial rye or the uh, annual rye, like these things are dying off on the bottom. Down here, they're not dying off. They're just not growing and they're just kind of staying bunched down there. So I think that is going to continue to look like that and more dramatically over time. 
Now here's Kentucky bluegrass. Again, you got the same thing, the die off of the leaves on the bottom. And the main leaves in the middle are growing. If we take a look, close look, I should take this inside so I don't have wind. But you'll see that the leaf has one central vein going down the middle, as opposed to the tall fescue, which has a whole bunch of veins uh, that are parallel to each other. Leaf tip here, notice how pointy that is. After 71 days since planting, probably about 61 days or two months of growth, uh, we're really starting to see the characteristics of each grass type finally emerge. All right, here we are, finally, day 100. I want to start off by showing you what is happening to the creeping red fescue. The fescue is something that's kind of blowing me away. Uh, basically, there's no leaves that have died off. So the lower leaves have laid down on the dirt, uh, but only a little bit of leaf structure is actually standing up. And then if you look really close, you can see that it has already started spreading underground via rhizomes. There are a whole, there's a whole new shoot coming out. Uh, about three quarters of an inch to the side of the mother plant where the actual seed was placed 100 days ago. Not only is there a new shoot coming out, but there is actually two. One of them has started rising up to the sky, and the other one's still down on the soil surface. Basically, this uh, creeping red fescue is matted down. It's matted down onto the ground. There are tons of little fine leaves in the mat, and it has already started spreading. Now, obviously, I knew this was going to happen. It's just happening faster than I expected it. A lot of people won't find grass laying on the ground like this to be very appealing. That's why you don't see a lot of people trying to run straight fine fescue lawns in a real lawn environment. You have a whole bunch of these plants right next to each other. So there's, they're kind of going to support each other and hold them up more upright. So there will be a little bit more of a fluff and an upright stance to them in a lawn. But you're still going to get this laid over kind of matted look. Uh, it kind of creeps across the ground. So let's compare it to the buffalo grass. We're seeing obvious color differences at 100 days. Now, I expected the buffalo grass to have started sending out its first rhizomes by this point. However, I do feel like I kind of stunted the plant when I thinned it out. That might have slowed it down a bit. However, this thing still looks pretty healthy and the blades are extremely fine. I would say the blades of this buffalo, buffalo grass look even finer than the blades of the fine fescue. And they're certainly lighter in color. Uh, even lighter in color to the Kentucky 31 tall fescue right to the side. Now, I understand I accidentally placed the turf type tall fescue tag next to the Kentucky 31 tag uh, after my kids pulled them out of the thing. But at this point, we're starting to see, or I believe we're starting to see some color differences between the two fescues. Not a lot, but I would expect that color difference to start becoming more apparent over the next 100 days or so. You can see it in the youngest turf type tall fescue leaf, which is particularly dark. It's much darker in color of green compared to any of the other fescue leaves that are here. Now, obviously, with all of the grasses that are here, the fescue leaves are the whitest. And of the turf type and the K31, the Kentucky 31 leaf is the whitest leaf of them all, as you would expect. But right now, even at 100 days post sowing, the difference isn't all that big. I have to re reiterate one more time. At 100 days or three months of growth, this does not mean that you have a mature stand of grass. It's only mature enough to start seeing the differences between the different grass types. If you were to let this go for another nine months and have a full year's worth of growth, then you'd probably see significant differences between the different grass types. Each trait of each grass type is going to magnify and become more obvious as time goes by. As you would expect, both fescues have a very sharp pointy tip on the current on the uncut blades. Each leaf has obvious parallel veins running up and down the leaf. This is in comparison to the ryegrass, which has a central vein. And although it has a pointy tip, it has more of a boat shaped tip. Now, unfortunately, I've been beating around the bush here for a while. The annual ryegrass is no longer here in the pot. And neither is Kentucky bluegrass, the KBG. Somewhere around day 75, my cat ate those two grasses. You know, cats. So unfortunately, I can't show you individual grass blades from those two at day 100, but I will pull some older footage of my KBG that I grew back in pots back in 2021. You notice that the KBG that I grew in pots also had a central vein, just like the perennial rye. The difference is that the central vein is a little, a little bit more pronounced. It's a little bit more obvious. Same goes for the tip of the blade. 
It's just as pointy, but that boat shape at the tip, that kind of cupping action at the tip, is also more pronounced than the perennial rye. KBG blades tend to have more of a matte appearance on both the front and the back of each leaf, whereas perennial rye has one side of its leaf a little bit more shiny than the other. And uh, here at day 100, even in my single seed experiment, it's clear to me that the underside of the leaf is more shiny. It's not a big difference. My guess is that the difference will become more obvious as this grass matures further along. I don't yet see a magenta color at the base of the perennial rye. However, I believe it is either there now, if I were to peel the leaf blades apart, which I'm not willing to do right now, or it will start appearing later on in its maturity. Unfortunately, the annual ryegrass was also eaten by my cat, so one will never know if it went to seed head by day 100. My guess is it wouldn't have gotten a seed yet, but it probably was starting to get close, especially if I had stopped cutting it. In the future, I'll have to grow a dedicated pot, probably, of annual rye next to a dedicated pot of perennial rye and see what the difference is after a reasonable amount of time. For those of you trying to figure out what kind of grasses you have in your own lawn, these are just the cool season grasses. There are also warm season grasses out there, and these grasses are still immature. If you'd like to learn more about grass identification, trying to figure out what kind of grass you have in your own lawn, make sure to watch the video up here in the corner. It's my main grass type identification video. There are also videos comparing all of the various grass types, dedicated videos that I made linked to down in the description below. So if you want to see, for instance, the difference between perennial rye and Kentucky bluegrass from more mature grass than what I've showed you here in this video, then links to that and other grass type comparisons are down there. So take a look and thanks for watching.